Salut! Welcome to Paris. Hi, I'm Anne, and I'm one of the Design Sponge contributing editors based here. Today we wanted to invite you for a quick trip over the city to meet one of our favorite people, David Leibovitz. Many of you know David for his delicious desserts, and today we're going to be making something from his new book, Ready for Dessert. But before we go meet David at the market, I just want to peek into the boulangerie and pick up something. I think it will grow great with our sorbet we're making. And don't worry if you don't have a boulangerie at the end of your street, because David shares the recipes on his blog. All set! Let's go meet David at the market. Allons-y! One of my favorite things I always do when I travel is to visit a local market. Paris has about a hundred of them happening around the city in every neighborhood, but today we're visiting my personal favorite, Marché au Boulevard Richard Lenoir, which happens every Sunday and Thursday morning in Bastille. Markets are not only a great way to get a sense of a place, they're an affordable way to eat amazing food and great for people watching too. So welcome to David's apartment and his giant kitchen. <laughs> my petit cuisine American. Right. My little Paris kitchen. Welcome. I'm surprised there's enough room for both of us, but we'll make do. So we're gonna make the red wine and raspberry sorbet, which is in my book. It's a wonderful recipe. This is probably my all-time favorite sorbet. It only has four ingredients, and it's this wonderful, frosty, delicious sorbet. And we'll use those delicious raspberries we got from the market. So in the saucepan, we're gonna go ahead and add three quarters cups of water, one cup of sugar. Well, now you're gonna to get to use your hands okay. um, to open the wine. It's great that it's a screw top wine. Um, some Americans are very skittish. They're like, ooh, screw top wines is not good. But very young wines such as this that are only gonna be, you know, they're gonna be drunk within two or three years. It's fine to use a screw top. Um, Cavi's wine experts in France say it's better to use a screw top than a bad cork. So this is a wonderful wine. We didn't get to taste it before you poured it all in there. But let's go ahead and put it on the stove top here and okay. bring it to a boil. So, this has come to a full boil and we let it boil for about a minute. And it smells really good. Mm. Ooh. It's almost like mulled wine. But better because it's summer. So we're going to go ahead and add three cups of raspberries. Okay. And I'm going to help you here. Thank you. These are beautiful raspberries, wow. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour those right into the wine. Okay. And watch that, don't splash yourself. We're gonna let it sit for an hour. So what you're gonna do now is you're just gonna go ahead and strain this. If you don't have a Moulinex, you can actually just pass it through a sieve and use a strainer, use a spatula. Okay. Hey, this one doesn't wanna go. Ah. It's suicide. <laughs> So we have this wonderful <laughs> liquid made with red wine infused with those fresh raspberries. And actually you can use frozen raspberries okay. because it works really well. So let's go ahead and chill this down before we go ahead and churn it in the ice cream machine. Okay. We'll just put it in the fridge here. So now we've got the mixture all in the machine. We're gonna put the lid on and turn it on. This is going to take about 30 to 45 minutes to freeze, and when it's done, we can take it out to the garden and have it with some champagne or some sparkling Fabulous. wine. I have the perfect spot in mind. Okay. So, Anne, now's the best part. We get to have dessert. Um, it's a beautiful summer day. We have these fresh raspberries that we bought at the market. Um, this wonderful sorbet. A lot of people like champagne, but in France, often people will drink sparkling wine like this, a vouvray. Okay. Um, it's wonderful poured over the fruit. And we've got these little baby strawberries. It's beautiful. I love the color. It's, mm. it's great for summer. And I love the fact that you bought Chiquette for me. I love. They're my favorite thing in the world, I think. So how would you describe them to an American? Because I've never seen them before I came to Paris. Oh, really? They're cream puffs. In America, we do make cream puffs. Uh, we often fill them with ice cream. They have this crunchy crystal sugar on top, which gives them that wonderful little sweetness. A lot of people look at them who visit France and go, oh, they look really salty. But it's that wonderful, okay. uh, it's called pearl sugar. And they go very well with dessert, but they're also a great afternoon snack. You buy a bag and you just eat them by the mouthful. So there's nothing inside, it's just air though. Yeah, that's, these, and that's why I feel okay eating a whole bag of them because I said there's nothing inside. <laughs> okay, that totally makes sense. Yeah, they look, they look like they could be an American donut hole, but um, oh, but it's the French version. No, but when you, when you break them open, they have this wonderful airy texture inside. I can't resist. Hmm. You'll easily stop, no? What? I know um, in one of your blog posts you just went to Tunisia, and I loved your tip about finding a local cafe and going there every mm -hmm. day during your trip. 
Well, as you know, in France, there's the concept of ma cantine, which is the place you always go and they get okay. to know you. Um, and that's very important, I think, even when you're traveling, but especially when you live in Paris, you want to get to know the people in your neighborhood. Yeah. The cafes, the butchers, the bread maker, the cheese shops, which is probably the most important person. I know, because when you travel, life. there's always that temptation to go and see and do everything. Mm -hmm. But I love the idea of staying in one place and really getting to know the people and the, the location. Well, I love your book, uh, The Sweet Life in Paris, because it is this memoir, but with recipes, and you have this really amazing sense of humor through mm -hmm. it all, which I think in living in a foreign country, you kind of take things for granted, but you, you need to go, roll with the punches all the time. Well, it's funny that you are talking about my book, The Sweet Life in Paris, um, because you live here, and after I wrote the book, a lot of people that live here and a lot of French people that live in America wrote to me and they go, oh, you nailed a lot of the stuff. Yeah, it's spot because on. Because Paris is not a museum, it's a real city. And a lot of people come here and they see a certain side of Paris. They go to the left bank and sit in a cafe and you know everything's charming. But for those of us that live here, we have to go to the bank <laughs> and you know have them tell us, well, we don't take, you know, we don't have any money today. You have yes. to come back tomorrow. You, you can't take money out on a Saturday, I learned. Or Monday. Okay. Some money. Or when they have fermature exception now, they just close. Yeah. But they also, they love to talk about food here. Yeah. And that's why I fit in pretty when you know, I've lived here. And when people find out I'm a baker or a pastry chef, they're very intrigued. And also bakers, we're naturally giving people, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to sound conceited, but no one bakes a cake and says, oh, I'm gonna make this for myself. I mean, you bake a cake to share it. Like, I made a liter, we made a liter of this sorbet to share. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Well, cheers. Cheers, and thank you so much for the recipe today and tour around the market. Thank you.